to your session 28. So I will have to go jump all the slides and go to, we already did all of them. We did answer. They look like we did answer a lot. We did answer this question, did we? Yes. And this one as well. No, we didn't answer this one. So we no, added, no, no, no. Yeah, we haven't done this one. Hang on. Added, yeah. Yes, we did. The answer was uh, one. Yes, we ended up here. So we continue with where we were. Um, so with Kali and Maba to final project is to determine if specialist type and gender of children are independent of each other at 5% level of significance. Consider the contingency table below and the contingency table does not have the totals. We need to choose which one is incorrect. So the first thing you need to do before you start even answering the question, please complete the total table. Then you can give me the values as we go along. Quickly do it on your side. And then I will ask you to give me the values. Okay, are you done? Do you have the uh, values, the total for speech therapist? 120. For neuropsychologist? 60. Psychiatrist? 40. And the grand total will be 220. For boys, 165. Girls, 55. Okay, so we're looking for the incorrect statement. The null hypothesis is that the specialist type and gender of children are independent. Correct. Is that correct? The alternative hypothesis is that the specialist and gender are in the, are dependent. Correct. We need to find the expected frequency for boys and speech therapists. So it's for 90. So we need to do row total. Multiply by column total. Divide by the grand total. So what is the row total for boys? Oh, sorry, for speech therapist. You need to go and find 120, multiply by 165, divide by 220. Ninety. Is it ninety? Therefore, that is correct. The observed frequency for boys consulting with a speech therapist is ninety. Is that correct? Remember, observed frequencies are the values given. That's also correct. That is correct. Number five, 
the degrees of freedom, we know that we need to say the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. <coughs> sorry, can I just ask a question? Yes. I'm sorry, I have a lot of questions to ask. Um, the expected frequency, um, it's, I have this formula, but with the absorbed frequency, you still use the same formula or what? Yes, sorry. Oh, with the observed frequency, uh, no. the formula you use. Observed means the data given, your actual observed. data. Okay, okay, no, that's the question, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes, no problem. Number of rows, how many number of rows do we have? Three rows. We have three rows. That's where my arrows are. Three minus one. The number of columns. Those are the columns. You must not count the totals. Oops. The number of columns, there are only two of them. Three minus one is two times two minus one is one. The answer should be two. So this one says they are three degrees of freedom. The incorrect answer is number five. Okay, so this exactly the same as the previous. Uh, 120, 60 foot. I'm just going to copy them. 120, 60 foot. And that was 220. And this was 165. And I forgot now. I'm lazy to calculate with my head 55. Number one says we need to test the value. Uh, what is the value of our test statistic? So it means we need to go calculate chi square stat and here I lied when I said we need to use um, uh, tables. I think for chi squared you need to go to the to the Excel table and go f use that. So chi square stat uh, because this formula is going to be very long if I use the formulas. So that is the formula to calculate chi squared stat. Oh, come on, what am I writing now? Observed minus expected squared divided by the expected. So we need to calculate all the expected values from here. I'm lazy as well. It's zero. So you already went and calculated it. Yeah, uh, Lizzie, you can use a long, long way with the formula. I'm going to use your ways. Uh, no, I mean like uh, now I am. I am going to use the, the, the tables. So let me just open them. Uh, chi squared. Uh, for chi squared, it's going to take you forever. So this was a three by two tables, so it's the second one from our template. So we just put the values on 19. Wrong, wrong, Lizzie, wrong one. You need to go to the last one on the right. That's sure. a two by three. So it's the one at the bottom. The oh, the one three by the two. Last one. One. Yeah. It's a three by two. In the exam, when they give you more than to the ones that I gave you, I don't know how you go in. Those who don't know how to use Excel, uh, I feel sorry for you. So you must come for Excel lesson before you go Have right. Have you always to used Excel? Excel. <laughs> Pardon? Have you always used Excel in the previous exams? Because I'm thinking no, now. No, they don't use Excel because the previous exams you would have went and wrote in a venue oh, where you sure. would use That's a That's the formula. question I wanted to ask. Um, <laughs> come so since you're writing exams, online, um, yeah, since you're writing online and at home, I think you can, yeah, use any resource you have at your disposal to assist you. Uh, so also, really like time as well. Mm -hmm. So 90 
30. I'm teaching you things that I'm not supposed to. So I'm going to be in trouble one day uh, because we I'm will, making you. We will deny Alice. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, because these videos are published so people can watch them and they will be like, yo, this one shows them how to cheat. OK, so that is our test statistic is zero. So therefore, it means already we have answered option option one and option two. I'm sorry, option one, option two, and option three are out. So the only thing that is left now is to go find the critical value. So finding the critical value, we need to use our degrees of freedom. I'm sorry, degrees of freedom. So our critical value. Our alpha here, they told us is 5%, so it's 0 0.05. And the degrees of freedom, we did calculate it previously. Remember, we got it, it was 2, so we go and use 2. The other thing I don't have is my table open. Okay. It's open. Um. Okay, I don't have a table open, so I just have to go and open. One of the STA. I'm sorry, I'm going to open anyone that I see. But remember, we're using the, the template from your lecture that I sent you. So on this one, let's see. Are the tables here at the end? Yes. So we're looking for the critical values of chi. Oh, the chi square critical values. We need to go to table E4. So we're looking for the degrees of freedom of 2 and alpha of 0, 0.05. That is the critical value. So option four will be the correct one. Any questions? Okay, no questions. Seems like today we're going to finish early because I think all the questions will be done. Okay, similar question. I'm not going to repeat all the values that we have there. So we can just use, because here they're asking us to make a decision. They say, what is the decision with regards to the hypothesis and the conclusion about the two variables? So remember we said our test statistic is zero and our critical value is 5,9. 911. So in order for us to make this decision, we can just draw ourselves a diagram th that helps us. I'm always not drawing it as a left skewed because I don't know how to draw. I've never been good with art. And here we said our critical value is 5,991. That's what we got as a critical value, right? 5,991. And we said our test statistic is zero. So if our test statistic is zero, it will fall in. Let me not even use anything that falls this side. We say we reject the null hypothesis. Anything that falls this side, we say we do not reject the null hypothesis. So our critical value of, this is our critical value, it's 5,9. Our test statistic, we did calculate what the, our test state is and we found that it was zero. So it will fall on the white area. So it falls in there do not reject so how do we conclude 
anywhere where it says reject, we're going to say that is incorrect. So they've We reject the null hypothesis. We reject the null hypothesis. The, those two, we know that they are not correct. Uh, come on. My screen is very sensitive today. Anything I touch, because I'm using a touch screen, you must bear with me when there are so many things happening. So we left with option three and option four. And option uh, five, we do not do this. We do not say we... Oh, come on. We do not say... Oh, yeah, right? We're going to finish next year with all these things that are happening. So we do not say we accept. We never say it like that when we work with hypothesis testing. So anyway, where you see a statement that asks we accept, you just know that that is the wrong way, statistically the wrong way of uh, stating the, the conclusion and the decision. So option three or option four? Option three says we do not reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the specialist type and gender of children are independent. Is, Number four, yes, sorry. Is it Let's, not saying we do reject? Where do you find your word not? Hmm? It says we do reject. There's no not there. Yeah, right. Then there is a there is a thingy. It's, we assume, it's a, error we on assume it's a typo then. Yeah, you can zoom and you're not going to find the knot. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a typo here. So it should say we do not. We, we do not. Uh, it's, we do not. So there is a type, typo. I hope in the exam that you don't find this kind kind of typos because this question I got it from the 2017 tutorial letter and I, I acknowledge that most of the tutorial letters and especially the questions that we use from tutorial letters they've got lots of typos and lot of errors um, but let's fix them and then we move on so number three says we do not because and conclude that the two variables are independent. And the fourth one says we do not reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that the specialist type and gender of children are dependent. Which one is correct? We had this discussion last time. So which one is the correct one? Number three or number four? I was still confused with the discussion of the last time, but I'm still going to say number three. Yes, number three is it will be the correct one because you need to always refer it back to the statement. So the other thing you need to also be aware of is when they do the conclusion, sometimes they can use the null hypothesis to make the conclusion, or sometimes they can refer to the alternative to make it conclusion. So with this statement, it refers to the null hypothesis because if we're not rejecting the null, the null hypothesis, then it means we're saying that the null hypothesis is true. And therefore we do not reject and conclude that the specialist type and gender are independent because the null hypothesis, we're not rejecting it, it is true. Therefore, there are there is a relationship between the two variables. Alternatively, Sorry, they could ask? say, yeah, sometimes they could say, uh, we do not reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is no sufficient evidence that specialist type and gender are dependent. So they could take they could take the alternative, which talks about the dependent sign and use it, but 
in the way you make your decision, you'll have to show it that you're not saying that they are that, that you're not saying uh, your alternative is true, you're saying because the alternative is not true. So this this one was straightforward. They took the hypothesis test, uh, the null hypothesis testing statement to make the conclusion. If they would have read it from the alternative, it would have said, we do not reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is no sufficient evidence, there is no sufficient statistical evidence, or there is no statistical sufficient evidence to conclude that specialist type and gender are dependent. So that do, uh, no sufficient tells you that it also says there is a relationship or there is no relationship because then we're saying they are independent. Let's go to the one that we ended up on, which is exercise nine. We did exercise nine because we worked out and we found that 881 and we said only that was not the correct one. That's where we ended up the last time. We need to be here. And I think we did also do this one, did we? Yes, we also did 10. Remember 10? I said uh, we interpret R squared. If we can revisit that, we interpret R squared by saying the total variation in Y is explained by the variation in X. Or we can say, alternatively, we can rewrite this whole sentence by saying, the variation of X explains the total variation in Y. One and the same thing, but written in another, that's English, which is my third language in South Africa because my first language is Tswana, then come Sut, so, uh, not Sut, then English, and then others. So in my third English language, this is how you can rewrite your English sentences. So we also looked at this and we said, if they gave us that the coefficient of correlation was 49 and they want us to explain the state or give the statement that explains that 49, anything that has a 70 or anything that does not have a 49 will not mean or will not interpret the 49. 51 can interpret 49, but we're not really interested in that. We're interested in the ones where they explain the 49%. So the first one said the exploratory variable explains 49% of the variability in the response variable. The other thing that you also need to remember is what exploratory is, is your X, and what your response is, is your Y. And the other one says the response variable for 49 well, the response variable explains 49% of the variability in the exploratory. So this one said, says Y explains X. And going back to the description of how we describe the coefficient of determination, X should explain Y. X should explain Y. Y should be explained 
by y. So there is, in English, we say the present tense and the past tense. So then that's how the sentences look. So the correct statement here will be only option number one. As we have said it last week, I just wanted to make sure that we're still on the same page. All right. Uh, Leslie, just sorry, go back one, please. Just go back. So if option number three, instead of having the word explains and it said explained, and they, they, they changed it around. Let's say they made both explained and option three would be the right one. Yes. Okay. In the, yeah, so that is what I, that's why I say in the present tense, we will use explained. And then in the past tense, we will, it's something that happened. So we will use explained. So these statements okay. are written in the present tense. <clears throat> so the catch, the catch for example, is explained and explains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me also clarify uh, number five, because number five also can be correct in a way, uh, but it's not correct in this instance. It will be correct if, because number five says only 51% of the variation in the independent variables is explained by the model. Ne? If they could have said, only 51% of the variable or the variation in the independent is not. If there was is not explained by the by the by the model, that statement would have been correct because it will be the other variation that is not explained. It accounts for the difference from 100%. Yes. 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 Correct. Okay, I hope your exam won't be this difficult. Now, let's go and explain the slope because this, this question says, suppose that the least square regression line for a random sample is y hat is equals to 15.50, which is our intercept, minus 0 0.69, which is our slope, times x, which is our independent variable, then the slope implies that. Remember, how do we interpret the slope? Okay, so teaching moment again. So, the slope, remember, is the change in the values of y. So the change in the values of y divided by the change in the values of x. So we say every one unit so if I move from year to year, I can also calculate the slope of that point. So we say for every one unit, so this one because it's positive, for every one additional unit increase of your x values, it will yield an increase in the value of blah, 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 of your y hat your estimated value of, of y. That is for a positive slope. I hope you do get me. Because this, when x increase in one unit, there will be an increase in one unit. An increase of the slope value. So if the slope here, let me not give you the right, the correct answer. If the slope here was 0 0.54, we would have said for one unit increase in the value of our X, it will yield an increase because it's a positive. It will yield an increase in the value of Y by that because we are adding or subtracting. So when the slopes, because we are adding, it will yield an increase of that much. If the relationship looks like this for the y and the x, we still say for every increase unit of x, because we can also still calculate the slope from there, for every unit 
of the changes that happened between this y value and that y value for that point, what attributed to it will be the, in the increase of this. So with this one, when x is increasing, y is decreasing. Because here the slope is negative. This is a negative slope. And therefore, if it's 0, 0,54, we would say for every one unit increase of the value of our x, one unit increase of the value of x, it will yield a decrease of this much from the value of y of 0, whatever the value is, because the negative is taken care of that decrease. So you have y hat is equals to 15.450 minus 0, 0.69. Which one of these statements is correct? Remember, everything that I was discussing here is the slope. The first value is our intercept. And the slope is the value that multiplies with the x. You must always remember that. The slope is the value that multiplies with the x. In order to describe your slope, you need to look at the value that multiplies with the x. So it means option one, option four, and option five will be out because they are interpreting the intercept. So you are left with one, two, and three. Number two. Number two. It will be number two because number two says there will be a decrease because the slope is negative. Number one says, uh, actually, I think num number one and number two, oh they are different so number one says there is one unit increase will yield an increase so therefore it means they're referring to the slope being positive it would have been the slope is positive but we know that our slope is negative number three it says when decrease and increase we never do it that way because with the slope we always talk about the unit increase in the value of x you'll never say decrease increase it doesn't make sense so number three also incorrect so the only correct answer is number one as i've just explained for one unit increase in the value of your x because that's what we use to estimate what the value of our y will be for all unit increase in the value of x will yield a decrease of 0, 0,69 in the value of our y. So it means we're going to decrease whatever the value of y we are estimating is going to decrease by 0, 0,69. Uh, just a question. Yes. On the previous one, yes. Um, <clears throat> I'm like, I'm kind of confused. I'm sorry, but I'm just kind of confused. With the 0 0.69, you look you looked at the slope, uh, this uh, figure, 0.69x. Mm. Oh, so is that the one that you just need to look at? Yes. And then it should tell you how much it's decreasing by, the y value is decreasing by? Yes. Okay, so if this, um, if this uh, was a positive, meaning that um, these, these, you said when it's a positive, the graph, um, the y is actually increasing, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so, okay, no, it's fine. I understand now. Okay. Yes. So, these two pictures should just give you an idea. Okay. Okay. So, when you're slow, it's just that I heard you saying, talking about minusing something from some. So, that's why I, I went. No. Um, because when it, when your slope is negative, it means whatever you are estimating the value of your y hat is. Remember, if your y hat was zero, oh sorry, if your your variable here is zero, therefore it means your estimate will be fifteen point five zero. Okay? Mm, yes. So your y hat there would have just been fifteen point 
But if your y hat year, oh sorry, your x year is y, is one, is one. Yeah. Therefore, it means on that 15.50, mm. we're going to subtract because it's one times 0, 0.69. Mm. We're going to subtract 0, 0.69. So it's going to decrease the value of y. Okay, okay. You understand? Yes, I understand. Um, By 0 0.69. So if it was positive, mm. we're going to increase the value of y. Okay. Ne? okay, yes, no, I understand. Thank you. All right. Lizzie, yeah. before you move on, just a, a hypothetical question. Mm. Would they throw in for a two unit increase in X? Would no. they ever do something like that? No, when we interpret, we always interpret by one unit increase because okay. we, um, we know that you, remember, we know that you can estimate the value of your, um, your value of your, uh, y hat, you can estimate it. But here we're not saying estimate what the value of your y hat will be. We say interpret what the slope tells you. That's all what they want. What does the slope tell you? So for every unit increase, one unit increase, because we're going to just say if one. So if they, if they say interpret the slope in relation to um, the unit increase of Eight, then it means you need to solve this whole thing and not the whole thing anyway you need to multiply eight times 0 0.869 or 0 0.69 times eight and know how much your value of your y will increase or decrease by okay i got that you answered it thank you all right now let's interpret Either the coefficient of correlation, I think that's what they want us to do. Remember your coefficient of correlation R lies between negative one and one. And remember there is either a perfect relationship or a moderate relationship. And when R is zero, it, there is no relationship. So you need to remember all that. So based on what you know, which one of the following statement is incorrect? We can read all the statement and then we're going to choose which one will be right. A value of minus 0, 0,8 listed as a coefficient of correlation R indicates an inverse relationship between two variables, X and Y. Remember, we're looking for the incorrect one. We, we will come back. I'll just read out, out loud. A value of minus 1.4 listed as a coefficient of correlation R cannot indicate an inverse relation between the two variables X and Y. And I'm going to underline the that. In simple linear regression, the coefficient of correlation R and the least square estimate B1, which remember B1 is your slope of the population slope, where they go, they even explain it, of the population slope must have the same numerical value. Number four, if all points in the scatter plot lie on the least square regression line, then the coefficient of correlation must be either 1 or minus 1. Number five, an indication of no relation, linear relationship between two variables would be a coefficient of correlation of 0. Okay. We can start from the bottom and we go uh, I will I will do a mix a mix mix a mix mix masala. So I'll pick and choose the statement we can look at first. Number five, an indication of linear relationship between two variables would be a coefficient of correlation of zero. Is that correct or incorrect? So here they are saying R is equals to zero. When R is equals to zero, 
we say there's no relationship no relation so number five is correct number four it says if all points on this cutter plot lie on the least square regression line then the coefficient of correlation will be one or minus one what number four Four is saying it says if my dots are like this then the least square regression line will just be there because then this my r will be equals to one and if my points lie like this then my least square regression line will be there and my r will be equals to minus one that's what number four is saying sounds correct that is correct. Now, here is where you might feel like, oh, I don't know what this. OK, so when they include words like inverse. It's just the opposite of the positive. So we know that there is the positive or the negative. So one is the inverse of the other, because if I look at this, if I flip this, it will look like the inverse of the other one. So if I take these two graphs, one is the opposite of the other. One is the inverse of the other because one is negative and one is positive. So that is those inverse. What do they mean? But we need to find out whether the statement as they put it is correct. Number one, a value of negative 0, 0,8 listed as a coefficient of correlation indicates an inverse relationship between two variables because it says when one increase the other one decrease is that correct correct that is correct number two i highlighted the words cannot because it says a value of minus 1.4 listed as a coefficient of correlation r cannot indicate an inverse relationship between the two values. Is that correct or incorrect? I would say correct. It is correct because we know that the value of R must be between, must, yeah. between minus one and one. So this statement, if they didn't include that statement, that this would have been incorrect because we cannot have a coefficient of correlation of minus one point or a value bigger than one. So the only statement that is incorrect would be number three, and it reads, in simple linear regression, the coefficient of correlation R and the least square estimate B of the slope, B1 of the slope, must have the same numerical value. They will never have the same numerical value because the slope, we calculate it using the X and the Y values because if I only have my X values of um, minus, uh, let's say one and, and two and three and four, if I calculate oh, my mean, uh, my X value and then my Y value, I have 0, 0,8, 0, 0,3, if I calculate both of them, they will not be equal to the regression line. And even the formula we use to calculate B1 and the regression line, remember from the sum square measure formulas, let's go to, let me open again. Uh, let me open the regression line. Sorry. Let me open this so that I can demonstrate what I mean. So remember also the formulas are different. So the formula to calculate the slope looks like this. The formula to calculate the regression line looks like this. So both of them will not be the same. Why? Because the coefficient of correlation also use the Y values. So if you look at this, they look exactly the same, even though I've written it, they are written differently because uh, they just multiplied uh, n with the summation of x and y, which uh, this you can rewrite it as that. And this is the value here. 
But on the coefficient of correlation, we also divide by the square root. Whereas on the slope, we don't divide by the square root. We just divide by the sum, summation of x, some square measures of x. Whereas here we divide by the square root of the sum square measure of x and the sum square measure of y. So they will never be the same. And that's how you can answer that question or know how to answer that question by just looking at the formula of the coefficient of correlation and the slope. They will tell you whether you will get the same answer. If you get the same answer, it will be by chance, but usually you will never get the same answer. It will not give you the same numerical value. Okay. Consider the following data from the variable used X and Y. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? And I said I'm going to use a formula, uh, sorry, a calculator on this one. So I'm going to use my Casio calculator when everybody else uses whatever the mechanism that they can use to answer the question. So I'll first put the calculator to state mode by pressing mode two, two again, two twice. So you press mode on your casual calculator and then you press two and then press two again. Now ready to capture the data. Eight equals four equal, 12 equal, 16 equal, and nine equal. And this is taught to the grade 12s. So I've just offered a class on Friday on the same topic to the grade 12 yesterday. 5 equal, 3 equal, 7 equal, 6 Can I ask you a question? Equal, and 5 equal, yes. Uh, can, can you also, you can just use the table, right? Uh, the spreadsheet that you gave us. Yes, you can instead use of, the Instead of using a calculator. Yes. Okay. So I said today I'm not going to use the spreadsheet. I'm just going to use the calculator so that those who don't know how to use Excel, at least they've got a backup. They can use their calculator as well. So, and you can also use the formulas if you want, but it's going to be time consuming to use the formulas. So we've captured our data onto the table. I can just double check. I've captured all my information and I can go on and off. So the first one says I must find my B0. Then I need to know that my B0 is my intercept. And my intercept, this is, this is intercept. And my intercept on my calculator is value A. So I can go to my calculator and say shift step which is button number one and go five and press one and equal and that should be the answer to my a so a is correct so i need to find my b1 which is my slope and on my calculator b1 is b B1 is B. Shift, stat, 5, and 2, and equal. It says two, 0.275, which is correct. So that is correct. Number 3 says I must check if this is correct so it means if i take both of my values y hat is equals to a plus b x so my equation should be y hat is equals to my a which is 
plus because my slope is positive, so it will be plus. If my slope was negative, it would have been negative then. Eh? 0, 0,275 x. So I need to take this and see if it looks exactly the same as what they have. So that is the incorrect one because they swapped it around. They swapped them around. Now I can also find my R because number four says the coefficient of correlation R. Remember in the exam, you don't have to go through all of them. You just choose whichever one you find correct and move on with your answer. So since we do in practice, I'm going to go through all the questions because that's how you you will learn, learn by doing. Okay, so let's calculate R. We go shift, start, five, and R is number five, and I press equal. Ah, I didn't press five, three, it's three. So shift, start, five, and three. I pressed five instead of three, equal. And my R is zero comma three, three, Two five, which is three three, and that is correct. Coefficient of determination will always be positive, yes, because it's the square of your negative r value will be positive. Square of a positive will always be positive, and you can use the Excel spreadsheet. Remember, on your Excel spreadsheet, which I'm not going to go into. To answer the question on the Excel spreadsheet, when you want to delete, just highlight the column and delete, and right click and say delete, and you move up. Delete up. If you want to add, you just go to anyone, depending on how many rows you want to add. If you want to add three rows, you highlight three of them, or if you want two, just highlight two and insert and say insert down so then it will shift them down and once you have captured your data let's say you've put in the data and the calculations that doesn't populate for the values that you are calculating like like those ones there it's blank you just go to the top one and drag it should calculate it will just do the same thing as it has been doing because you're just copying the formulas. And your Excel will just do the calculations and you can just come here and look at the values that you're looking for. For all the calculations, so it will show you how it calculated all of them. So we move on to 14. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? I'm going to give you time to think and then we will look at it together. Remember, you're looking for the incorrect statement. Okay, hey, are we done? Do you have your answer? I'm going for number three. 
You going with number three. Me too. You going with number three as your incorrect answer. Yeah. Yes. Are you all agreeing with number three? Who else has a different different answer? Okay, so I assume all of you say number three. So if you are writing an exam today, let's see how, and this question is out of four marks. Let's see if you're getting the full mark or you're getting a zero. Miss Liz, can I yes? differ? R can be That's negative because uh, if you make it a determination with R squared, it will remove that negative to be positive. Uh, okay. It's also true. Okay. Yeah, I also uh, saw that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so are you ch are you all changing your answers now? You no, know, I have two answers that are right. I was going Lizzie, for number three and number four. Okay. Lizzie, you're so, putting you're putting undue pressure on us. <laughs> no, I just want guys, I just want to know if you understand the work. It, it's not it's, there's nothing wrong because we're still in the practice sessions. We, we're still learning. So there's nothing wrong. So we're still going to get a lot of the questions incorrect, but we're going to learn from that. Okay, so, if, I, if I'm allowed to change, I will start with, I, I will go with what the other lady said. I'll first go with number four, because R can be negative. Okay, good. Now, let's, let's see if you're getting a four or a zero in the exam. Number one, we know the definition. I'm not going to go whether this is correct or incorrect. I'm going to give you the definition and you can make up your mind as well. So number one, the coefficient of correlation, it's in the definition that we went through. It measures the strength and the relations and it measures the strength and the direction of the relationship. So yeah, they already they they saying it measures the strength. So it means it's correct. Even if they could have added also measures the strength and the and the direction of the relationship because it it tells you two things when you look at coefficient of correlation. Is it strong, perfect, or moderate? That is the, that is the, um, the strength. The direction, is it positive or negative? That gives you the direction of that relationship. So that is one. Uh, <coughs> then number two, coefficient of determination. That's just the one to know if you know what coefficient of determination uh, parameter looks like. And that is R squared. And that's correct. So number one and number two are correct. Number three. Remember, I know that in, in the definition that I gave you, I also said X implies, oh, sorry, X explains Y. But you must also remember that this model is still talks to is still uh, the model is still reliant on the x values in order to estimate what your y value is. So therefore, it it still says with whatever the model is, it will be it will explain what happens to the y hat. So yeah, it says your R squared. So we can do the definition of R squared in three ways. In the, the first way that I showed you how, or we can do it in relation to the regression line. And this says R squared of 0, 0,70 implies that 70% of the total variation is explained. And this can be explained by the total variation in X or it can be explained by the regression line because the regression line has the total variation of X because of that, the estimation that the X value will do in order to get your Y estimate. So you can explain it using, it explains by, uh, sorry, by the regression line, or you can say it is explained by the variation in X. Both of them 
say one and the same thing because I could have just ignored all this regression line and only relied on the X because it tells me the variation in X. And that's what the regression line is. The least square best fit line has the variation of the values of X. So option three is also correct. The word explained threw me out. But that's... The, Let's go I was thinking back. about the word explains, yes. I was looking, yeah, you see. It was the other way, yeah. No, no, I, I understand now. I, I didn't have your... I, didn't have have in y. Y. I just saw X. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, didn't have the... X, and I, I knew have, it would affect the whole equation. I didn't have these crib notes when we got to that question. <laughs> <laughs> you must always have your notes. <laughs> no, remember now. Okay, so R can never be negative. Hello, ha. We just said it. R can always be between negative one and one because it can be between those values. So R can also be negative. So this is the one that makes this question incorrect. If the coefficient of correlation R is positive, the slope should also be positive. And that's the other way of finding out whether your R, your slope or your correlation or your relationship is positive or negative is by looking at either the R or the slope because they have to have the same side. Lizzie, it's amazing how the human mind works. With that mm. number four, my head was still stuck on the R squared at the above of number three. So when I read number four, I'm looking at R squared can never be negative, which is correct. That's, the, you know how the mind works. Yeah. Because they, they, they used R squared and then R squared again, and then you come here, you still have the R squared. So you need to read your questions carefully. Relax when you are in the exam. You had, us under, you had us under pressure. <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> okay, let's look at 15. A production manager has compared the dexterity score Ooh. of the five assembly line workers with their hourly productivity units per hour. The least square regression equation is calculated at 19.2 plus 3.0x. If a job applicant has a dexterity score of 15, his predicted productivity per hour will be 3. Option 3. Option 3. You just substitute where you see x, you just put 15 and work it out. So you will have y hat is equals to 19.2 plus 3 times 15, which should give you 64.2. It seemed like this we did do. Why it looks so familiar? We did it. A prior to being hired, the five salesperson for a computer store were given a standard sale aptitude test. For each individual, the score achieved on the aptitude test and the number of computer systems sold during the first three months of their employment are shown below. So here we have our X as the score on the aptitude test and Y being the unit sold. So those are the sales values in the three months that they have been employed. So they also gave you some square measures and they're asking you to calculate the coefficient of correlation. You can either use the formula, which is R is equals to N times the summation of X and Y minus the summation of X. times the summation of y 
divide or I must not divide by n again because I'm multiplying n there. Divide by the square root of your n times the summation of x squared minus the summation of x squared divided by I'm not, I'm not supposed to divide by n because I'm multiplying the, the first one with n times n times the summation of y squared minus the summation of y squared. You can use that or you can go ahead and go to your calculator or your Excel spreadsheet and do the calculations. So remember with the formula, you just substitute all the values that you see there. So let's see. So when you're working with your calculator and I already had some values on my calculator, I need to clear my calculator because now everything is stored. So I can just go and clear. I'll use one to clear all of them. Reset and then I will press the AC to reset. Oh, but then that reset everything. So I must just start again. I must put the values onto the table. Equals 70 equal. Probably you already have an answer because I'm explaining. Let me just go up. 25 equal. 15 equal. 10 equal. 40 equal. And I've entered the wrong data. I've seen 80. Let's go down. 35. There is my wrong answer. So I must just enter the correct one. Enter. 90, 20. There we go. Go out. We're looking for R. So shift, start, 5, 5. R is 3. Equal. which is option number number five. So if you are using your formulas, your N, there are one, two, three, four, five. So it will be five times 7,200 minus 305 times 95 divide by the square root of 5 times x squared is 21825 minus 305 squared times, uh, I must close the bracket, times 5 times uh, five, uh, 2575, close bracket, minus uh, my y is 95 squared. Let's calculate it manually because on my calculator I found that it's 0, 0.892283. And because my calculator is not dropping off any, I got that. So let's see if I use the formula whether I get the same. Same answer. Let's see. Must use my must go back to math mode. So I must go to comp one <sighs> fraction. Uh, we have five times seven two zero zero close bracket minus open bracket three oh five times 
95 close bracket divide by the square root of the square root of open bracket 5 open bracket 21825 close bracket minus 305 uh, squared close bracket open bracket uh, 5 times open bracket 2575 close bracket minus 95 squared close bracket uh, do i close twice no once uh, and let's hope it works yeah i get the same answer 0 0.892283 so you can also go and use your excel and hopefully you will get the same answer as me I said I'm not going to, I'm tempted to, I'm tempted to use the Excel. I'm not going there. Okay, for this one, I can use Excel. Hey, it's very long. How, how does that work now? <laughs> Just a minute to go. <laughs> it's going to take me forever to punch these values on the calculator. And if I go wrong, um, it's going to take me forever. So. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So I'll use Excel on this one. So you can just determine which one you use Excel and which ones you don't. So let me use Excel on this one. Uh, because I'm using Excel, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have ten workers. So I need ten rows. So at the moment I have seven. So it means I still need to add. I need to add. Three more, so I'm just going to go to the ones at the bottom here. And add the three rows, highlight the three so that I can just add. Insert three rows, insert down and it's going to take us a longer. Time to complete 34. 39, 42, 41, 53. Lizzie, I think we did this on Wednesday as well, eh? This question. We did. Yes. So it means I'm repeating some of these questions. Yeah, this was a this was a Wednesday when I remember it because I wasn't sure about the mean of X and Y. I was uh -huh. looking at the wrong place on the Excel. That's how I remember it. But you can maybe still do it for the folks who didn't join on Wednesday. 60. Okay, so we can do go there. 140, 293, 161, 183. The is not working. Ah. Mm. So I've been typing in the same column forever. Okay. 140. Probably I'm type I'm and I'm pressing shift instead of enter. Okay, I must make sure that my other finger is on the right button. Two nine two nine three. We stick with your calculator. One six one <laughs> one eight three one seven nine two two one one seventy two two three two one four and two for one and i should be able to check my values if they match what they have on the screen then i will know that i have the right answers the sum of x is 475 the sum of y they we match exactly on those ones so let's answer the questions the mean of x and the mean of y so those who are using manual calculators and they don't know how to use Excel, easy. For the mean of X, you just take this value, 
divide by 10 because they are 10 values, it should give you the mean. So 475 divided by 10 is 47,5. Divide by 10 will give you the mean of y, which will be 202,5. But that's how far I can get in terms of those ones values. So let's go look at the other options that we have. So these are the values that you can also look at. Sorry. Okay. So the mean of X is 47 and you can reduce the decimals if you want, if you want to get exactly the same as what they have. So they left their answers at one decimal or two decimals. So this is at one decimal. And the others are at two decimals. So you can just adjust your decimals if you want. This also. We'll just adjust those ones. Okay, so if we look at this, oh, they are at three decimals now. I've just adjusted because I was looking at this. Anywho, anyway, the slope, exactly the same where I am. The intercept is 2.514. That's exactly the same. The regression line, it should read 2.54. 2.514 plus 4.2. It doesn't say that, so that will be the incorrect one. There is a strong positive relationship just because they said strong. By looking at the slope alone, it will not help us to know whether is that a strong or a moderate or a weak or a perfect. We can only see from the slope that is a positive relationship. In order to answer that strong, we need to look at our R. And our R is 0 0.98. So there is a strong positive relationship because also the R is positive. Okay. Given the candy bar, Manufacturer, they have the price and the sale. Referring to the table, what is the percentage of total variation? You see, yeah, what is the percentage of total variation in the values of your candy bar that is explained by the regression model? So, what are they asking you to find? Pardon? Let's go one back, please. Why did you say why is four wrong? You said the slope is that, so your equation of a straight line should be, or of the regression line should be your intercept, since I'm using the values that they have, intercept plus the slope slope x so that then you know what you need to be substituting so let's substitute the value the value of the intercept is 2.514 the value of the slope is 4210x are they the same thank you thank you Okay. Yeah. So coming to number 18, what are they asking us? The percentage of total variation in the candy sales explained. We've dealt with this, so it means even when you go to the exam now, you would have you 
the only thing you would have mastered will be this section, this path of the regression line. What are they asking you to calculate? So you need to get your coefficient of determination answer multiplied by 100 to get that percentage. Thank you very much. So multiply that by 100. So that is what they are asking you to calculate. So if you're using your Excel, it's already there. Oh, come on. It's already there on the Excel. So if you're using Excel, so but my fellows who are with me today on the calculator. You're on your own. <laughs> So let's go, and, <laughs> yes, let's go and use our calculator and capture the values. So 1.3. I'm not going to keep the zeros at the end because it will still keep it as 1.3 on the calculator, especially where it's got last part is zero. So 1.6, 1.8. Let me show you. You see, it keeps only 1.8. So typing 1.80, it's just a waste of time. And also with the two, you just type two, 2.4. And the last one is 2.9. Then we go up, 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 up to number one and go left and then 100. So here you have to keep uh, type 190, 90, 40, 50, 38, and 32. So it should be six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go out, shift, stat, R, five. And we go find first R. And we go three. And equal that is our coefficient of determine uh, coefficient of correlation. In order to find the coefficient of determination, we press x squared and press equal, and that is our coefficient of de determination. And then we need to just multiply that by a hundred, and that gives us. 78.39%. Uh, sorry, Lizzie, can I just ask you? Yes. It times it by 100 because they say what is the percentage, right? Or... Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's also a variation is the R squared. And then, then they say. So okay, R squared. This... So yeah. if we take R squared, lies between 0, zero. and 1. Right. Okay. okay. Or we can say it lies between, if it's R squared percent, it says it lies between 0 percent and 100 percent, if it's like that. Okay, no Thank you. Okay. Happy? Number 20. And I think this is the last question. The slope represents. Number one says the predicted value of Y when X is equal to zero. Number two, it says the estimated average change in the value of Y per unit change in the values of X. Number three says the predicted value of Y. Number four, the variation around the line of regression. And number five, predicted value of X when Y is equal to zero.
Is there only one correct answer? There is only one correct answer. So you need to know how to interpret the slope. We did this. Remember? That's the slope. How do we interpret the slope? This represent a change. So it's option two. It's option two because the slope is the estimated value on y. Ah, when there is then one unit increase or one unit change in the value of your x. That is the slope. And I think we are done for the day. Up to so far, there is nothing more that I can offer. I've done as many as uh, I uh, is as it possible as I can get. Is it possible to go to the um, spreadsheet for for this one, uh, unit eleven? The, no, the, the Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Do you want to answer this question on Excel no. spreadsheet? No, 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 no. I just. Oh, okay. But sorry, I don't. Add, I'm, I'm, I'm no, not I, I wanted. I, I'm asking. Can you open up the spreadsheet? Because I, I wanted to ask you something that's that's on the spreadsheet. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um. Can you can you just go down a bit? Uh. Well, I don't. I don't understand. Uh. For me, this part here. I don't. Can you just briefly explain to me? This what one's is, yeah at the bottom. Yes. Yeah, You're referring to this one. Okay, so I'm I'm I must take back this to at least I think there were six or five. I'm not sure. In order to align them, I'm just gonna take it up a little bit. You see, I left my measures there, so I need to go back and fix undo. Ah, yere, 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 yere delete because I want to align them. So let's see, are they back to one line? Yes, they are. So at, here at the bottom, in yes. on the content slides that we used, there were questions or oh, there is a section where we talk about whether using the SSEs and the SSRs to calculate um, your regression line so you can use them or not so there were also formulas on how to calculate them and this also yeah so in previous years when you go and write in a venue they would have also given you formulas so some of the formulas are like this on that spreadsheet so you can also use them to calculate for example your r squared and yeah i just used the r squared as an example in order for us to calculate R squared, we need SSR, which is the regression sum square measure divided by the sum square total. Ne? So in order for us to calculate SSR and, and SS total, so SS total, we can calculate it by adding SSR and SSE. But if we give an X and Y value, how do we then calculate this? So if I look at, let's take, for example, SST, you can see that the formula is straightforward. With SST, it says is the summation of your Y value, which is this values, minus the mean, which if I go up, that will be the mean of Y minus the mean of Y. So for all those values, you subtract the observed Y value minus this. So that is what I do here and then square. So I do all of them. So this will, uh, this will be, if, come on. Okay, I'm gonna delete that. There is a, so if you look at this, it says it's the Y 
minus the mean and I just square the answer the, with that part. It squares the value and that gives you the, the answer for that one and I do for all of them and I add them. So this, the sum at the end is your SST, is your sum square measure of total. And if you look at SSE or SSR, so let's... So sorry, SSR. can I just stop you there? Yeah. Um, so when you look at the formula uh, next to the whole table, um, yes. the regression sum of squares. Yes. So, so they use, for when they're dividing, they use the total. This one. Yeah, which figures, like, which figures uh, make up the 1.030257? I'm going to show you now. So that's why I'm, I'm coming to the SSR, because if you look at the SSR formula, let me make it bigger, you can see that that is Y hat is the estimated value. Né? So in order for us to get this SSR, we need to estimate the Y value. So if you look at this, this is the estimated Y value there. So how do we calculate that? I use this X value plus the formula that we're using here. So as you can see there, I'm taking our regression equation and I'm estimating what the value of X will be for every one of them, I do that. So I estimate all this value and then I come here and I, est I use the estimated value and the mean of Y. So this will take, oh, come on, click on the right one. This takes the estimated value, subtract the mean of Y and And then I calculate the sum at the end. So adding all of them creates SSR. So SSR, which is your total. So this is this value, SSR, is this 21,000, uh, is it 21,216,096, something like that. And SST is this value here, the 210623. That's SST because it's the summation, is the summation of your, your values. And that's what I do. Take the SSR, divide by the SST to calculate R squared. And that's the formula. So this is just the additional information you will like in the exam, you will not even use that. I don't think they will ever even ask you to do that. It's just that on the, the assignment, you. sorry to cut you there. Oh. Um, on the assignment, uh, when I did it the first time, there was a question that had like SSR and SSC on it, and I, was, I got confused. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's why I want to understand this whole SSR and SSC. Um, yeah. Thing. So sometimes if they have given you the X and the Y values, so if they, if the question already gave you X and Y, you should be able to calculate them. But sometimes they do not because they will give you SS, SST and SSE or SSR and SSE. You can calculate SST because SST can I write on here? I cannot write. Also, just to add, so, uh, there was like a one way they had like two X and X1 and then a minus X, X as well. So like why you, now you have Y, Y yeah, minus so Y. There, there was a question like that in one of the activity that we did uh, like this. So you see this, <laughs> those are not the SSTs and SSRs. So no, in one of no, I'm just showing you. So, for example, if here they would have given you SST as well as a value, you can use this to calculate your your R squared or R or things like that. On the Excel, uh, let me see if... So... Yeah, but then on here, I'm not doing the SSR and SST formula. Uh, Lizzie, mm. if you look at your values for your SSR and SSTs, the one, four, three, six, 
it differs from the ones at the top that you have with the other calculations. So you've got two but, different value sets. No, 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 wait. What are you talking about now? Am I confused? So if you look at this value here, your, mm. sorry, go, go down. Yeah, so you've got your value X and Y values. It's one, four, three, six. Oh, four. yes, I didn't change them. Yes, uh, it must so be the same you, as the top one because your calculations are based on these ones here. Yes, so I was just demonstrating. So when you work, when you use this, when you use this, you need to copy the values that you are using there here at the bottom. You cannot use a different value. So you need to make sure that you copy that. So I didn't copy those ones back onto here. I was just demonstrating how they they got calculated because this doesn't change the the top part because this is just the hard copy thing here. I didn't do any formulas. So you will have to go and copy. So if you want to use the same formulas, you will have to use the same values. And then. And can you go to the other side of the, the spreadsheet? Which other side now? Uh, I think it's this right. side. Yes. OK, so this one is an Excel output, and that's why they I have a note there that says this is not an automated. It's done manually because this I can redo this by, for example, to get in order for me to get the same values. I can just redo it with these values there. You need to get your your Excel to be on uh, to have activated the add in for the data analytics uh, or the data analysis and then you will use the regression and then from there you select your values so uh, if i select my y and ta input the y values don't select the x values as your y so you need to make sure that you select the right y values i'm also going to keep the very the the label and do not include the total so our x and i must take there i've included the label because then i need that uh, don't worry about the bottom part and in terms of the output i'm going to replace what i have there so i'll just use and you must make sure that when you click on the output range you the mouse or the thing is clicking inside that block there and since i'm replacing i'm going to click on the summary output and i run the thing and it will say do i want to overwrite yes i want to overwrite because i don't want the same information that is there and as you can see this should look exactly the same as what i have on their table so my r squared or my r is 0 0.69 which is 0 0.6 0 0.9964 which is the same my r squared should correspond to the r squared that is there then you can skip all this because the only values you need is those two so you can either use an excel or you can use these formulas or you can like you can create your own excel output so this you must know that this is your y intercept so this corresponds to so if you followed all the recordings that we did we already covered this as part of part of the session so this y intercept it is this value there so it's minus 6.290 as you can see that it corresponds and this x value will be your x slope that's your value for the slope which is that value there and that exactly looks the same as that um the and yeah so that is it that's it in terms of this uh, i think this one is more explanatory re recreate it if you want to use if you want it but yeah 
I was just using it as a demonstration that when you get the output from Excel, so you can either use Excel in terms of that, or you can use the data sheet, this one, the manual, the automated manual calculations that we have. It's still manual, but it's an automated, but the challenge with this is if you do something wrong here, or you, let's say you do it like this and you insert, you might look at the wrong information because then it moves everything that is on the Excel sheet. And sometimes it might mess up some of the calculations. Like if I look at this value, so it says 6.29. If I go back to my Excel spreadsheet, let's see if it still kept all the values the same way. So it did keep them the same way. But sometimes if you do something wrong with how you insert your new columns or your new rows there, especially your new rows, uh, it, they might calculate different. So you just need to be careful when you do this. That's why I added this, just to give you a guide in terms of how to work with the Excel spreadsheet. All right, that concludes today's session. I am tired. <laughs> I'm talking <laughs> for the first time ever. <laughs> okay, any question before we switch off the recording? I'm also very hungry. Yes. Are we are we all right? Um, not related to today, today's uh, um Class, do we ha we have another one on Wednesday? So, oh yes, on Wednesday. What what are we doing on Wednesday? Uh, oh, on revision. Wednesday we're doing revision. So we'll be doing revision assignment one, uh, assignment one, which had chapter one, two, three. So it means we're doing assignment or oh, chapter one, two, three revision. So it's not going to be a detailed revision because we'll be going through the questions um, that were asked in the assignment questions. So, and remember also, so when I, when we do the revision on those assignment questions, the ones that I have might be different to the one that you wrote, like, uh, because remember the questions are randomized. So, I will get a different set of questions that is also randomized because the lecture when he sent us the pack for assignment one, uh, it will be different to what you you received as a, a, a individual students. Uh, but the questions are the same. It's just that maybe you got a 56 and then the other one got an 80 or, but the questions would have been exactly the same. So when we do the revision, I'll just give you hints in terms of how you should have tackled the question, what you need to look out for. So this will be in preparation for the exam as well, because similar questions might be asked in the exam. Not exactly question, the exact questions, but similar might be in your exam. So we need to go through um, those assignment questions. So on Wednesday, we do chapter one, two, and three, because I think the way your assignment was, was it chapter one, two, and three, or was chapter one and two? I can't remember, but it's based on assignment one. Uh, maybe even depending on how long it will take us, maybe we can also start with assignment two as well. And then like that, because we don't have enough time to do individual assignment because there are five. Therefore, it means we're going to have to use five sessions. We don't have five sessions in September to just go through the assignments. Uh, maybe we'll use two sessions or three sessions to go through all the assignments. And then the others will start looking at the exam uh, question papers because I want to um, go through the format of the exam, how you will, because the assignment don't help you because the assignment, there were 10 questions or 15 questions 
that comes from the same question that come from the same chapter maybe eight come from the same chapter and ten come from the same chapter which does not help you when you write the exam you get two or three questions and you need to know the logic of how you answer the question from which chapter from which section and how do we answer this what formula do i need to consider and so forth so we need to get into that um, and the sooner we start doing a lot of exam prep questions going through the typical exam paper the more you get used to how to write the exam so with that Ah, like I said, I'm tired of talking. Not that I, I don't want to talk to you guys. I think also my voice is going and, and it makes my throat uncom uncomfortable. <clears throat> you must keep vodka next to you. It helps. Yes. Only if I knew I could go and buy, but it's Saturday today, so it's... The... The thing is closed. Most we only open the bars at until Thursday. Next time. <laughs> 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 All right. If there are no other questions, uh, then I will see you on Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. Nice to see you too. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Miss Lizzie. Bye. Thanks, Miss Les. Bye.